There's also an interesting repair on the back here. Don't know what that was, but it's a nice round hole that's been epoxied over. Anyway, after a little bit of discussion time, Jeff and I decided that the only way to really try to get at those blocks of wood inside of the guitar was to take the back off. But of course, the, uh, the back and the top were glued together with all of those blocks of wood. So this wasn't going to be simply a matter of scraping all around the edges and having the back pop off. We first had to separate some layers. So we were able to take a, a really big chisel and stick it between a couple of those layers of wood and hit it with a hammer a few times and uh, we saw that the two layers separated from each other which was good so that meant that when we took the back off it would actually not still be attached to those blocks. So in my haste to just start the process I, I wasn't uh, thinking about recording at the time but first step was to remove the bindings then I quickly realized that 50 some year old bindings are going to be pretty difficult to save so kind of gave up on that idea and uh, at some point I'll just I'll replace the bindings but we uh, got the bindings off and then using a variety of hot knives were able to to uh, loosen the top I'm sorry loosen the back from the sides all the way around and pop the back off so when we took the back off this was kind of how it came out um, you can see a nice block of walnut attached to the back and then a couple of other longitudinal braces um, and then here this next layer was three more pieces of walnut then there was this pretty thick block of walnut that's that's like an inch and a quarter maybe so that came off and this was a separate little piece that was not even glued to it. I'm not sure what that was all about, but not sure what any of this was all about. And then the last remaining, oh, maybe three quarters of an inch thick piece of walnut is still attached to the soundboard. I think these are the remnants of the original braces. Um, and then this discoloration that you can see, I believe, is epoxy that is all over the inside of the guitar. Um, it's already been, we scraped it off the back of the guitar, so the back doesn't look like that anymore. But where it gets really dark here in the... Uh, in the deepest part, that epoxy is over a quarter inch thick. So it's all over the guitar. You can see it clinging to where the sides and the back met. So along the way, we will try to get all that out of here because it really doesn't serve any purpose. I mean, it's, it's not increasing the strength, it's just adding weight. This was the heaviest guitar I've ever lifted, short of the first one that I ever built. Um, I think this one weighed about seven and a half pounds. And it would not have been a lightweight guitar to begin with, um, but adding all these extra blocks of wood certainly didn't lighten it in any way. The sides are very interesting. They're 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven layers of plywood. So they're more than a quarter inch thick. And unlike most guitars, there's no curved lining in this instrument that's normally put in to increase the surface area for gluing the top and the back. But because this is already so thick, you don't need to add the extra lining. So the next thing to work on will be to try to get this block out without damaging the soundboard and get this block out and these two braces without damaging the back. Um, the, the epoxy went right over the label so it's kind of hard to see but from what we could read of the serial number it looks like this guitar was probably made in November of 1975 but if we get a better view of the serial number sometime we might modify that to some other date.